What's up guys? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. There have been a lot of new changes to my tank since I last talked to you guys. New corals, new fish, the whole nine yards. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. A lot more coral stuff happened than I originally expected for this video, if I'm being completely honest with you. Most of it actually being pretty good. So for starters, the last time I asked everyone in the comments for suggestions on what I should put on this rockscape to kind of fill it out. I got all kinds of suggestions ranging from torches to gorgonians to even a Kenya tree. And that was very tempting. If you remember from last time, I was very adamant about not having Acropora in my tank and I have not changed my mind. Believe me, I have not changed my mind. None of you can change my mind. It's set in stone. There's not gonna be Acropora in this tank. However, I did end up putting some easier SPS in my tank instead, kind of as a compromise to the people who did want me to have some branching corals, which honestly, would look really cool to have some branchiness happening in part of my tank since there's a lot of flowy uh, LPS on the right hand side. I think it would be really nice to have some branching corals on the left hand side. So uh, a lot of people suggested I tried some bird's nest coral, aka Seriatopora, and so that's exactly what I did. I added a pink bird's nest here, and I also decided to add a teal stylophora up here as well. So two SPS corals. <laughs> Some other additions also include this awesome rainbow Recordia Florida on the back end of the tank. Uh, some Magician Zoanthids and two more frog spawn for the little clownfish grove that we have forming on this side of the tank as well. And then speaking of frog spawn, we noticed with the first two frog spawn colonies, the clowns were kind of just burying them in the sand with how much sand they were uh, kicking up, I would assume, from hosting. I'm not entirely sure why clownfish mess around in the sand so much, but it wasn't doing the frog spawn any good. So we needed to get them stabilized onto something. The first attempt was just trying to set them on some PVC, and I don't know how I managed to do it, but I did get Than to do it for me so I wouldn't get attacked by the clownfish <laughs> because those clowns were not happy to have people in the tank. They were being such jerks the entire time. And it didn't end up being worth it, believe it or not, because the clownfish ended up just pushing the frog spawn off of the PVC the exact same day. So the next step was just to add some rock to the sand and that seemed to have worked out a lot better than the PVC just because there was a lot more surface area, so if the frog spawn did get pushed around, they wouldn't exactly fall off. And in hindsight, it was a better addition because when I added the two new pieces of frog spawn, uh, I had something to attach them to with the putty. So it all ended up working out in the end. So we've gotten the new guys out of the way. What about the old stuff? How's that coming along? Well, I'm happy to say that my anti-venom Favites has definitely bounced back and got a lot of its color back, if not all of its color back, and everything else seems to be doing super happy as well. The only thing that has gone wrong has been my battle with my electric Oompa Loompa zoanthids. I know, it's, it's super sad, to, but they just completely melted away. Um, they really didn't make it. I don't know what I could have done better, but I think they were just more sensitive to being moved than the other guys were, and I guess they never really recovered from that. So, have any of you guys experienced anything like this? Please let me know in the comments down below so I don't feel like a complete failure. <laughs> Not only have there been a lot of changes to the corals in this tank, but some new fish and inverts have made their way into the tanks as well. First and most obvious, a new leopard wrasse has made its way into the tank. Originally, this little guy had a home in one of our quarantine tanks, but we decided to give him an upgrade and put him in my tank, and he's been loving life in here. If you remember last time, I had a huge amphipod explosion and the wrasse has made quite a meal out of all of them. And there are still some amphipods left, I've seen a few, but a lot of them are gone. I know that amphipods are good for the biome of the tank, but the amphipods were bothering the sea cucumber a bit and I didn't like that at all, so they needed to be taken care of. Out of context, that sounds like I'm the mob boss of this tank, so you know what? That's the direction we're going. 
Other additions to this tank also ended up being a couple of hermit crabs. This wasn't exactly a planned addition, it was very last minute. We got in a shipment of bumblebee snails and there were a few shells that were not filled with snails. <laughs> there were some hermit crab stowaways and we really didn't have anywhere to put them so they just became new members of my tank. Since they are so small, it's hard to keep track of them, but I do enjoy when they make appearances every now and then. So those are the new additions. The other members of my tank are still doing good. The clowns have actually started laying eggs in the frog spawn, which is why they have been super bitey and aggressive lately. Uh, because of this, I've had to take certain measures to keep myself from getting eaten alive by the female specifically. So I actually have this random piece of pipe that I use to uh, move things around if I make small adjustments. Like, for example, if a snail gets turned over, I'll use the pipe to flip it back around without sticking my hand in the tank. And if I actually have to stick my hand in the tank, I'll kind of use this pipe like a sword to distract her or just fend her off valiantly. <laughs> Which can actually be quite complicated depending on what I'm trying to do and it's not fun at all. <laughs> Another way I keep from getting bit that I recently figured out is actually egg crate. So I have some pieces of crate on the top of my tank as like a makeshift lid to keep anything from jumping out. And I can take the smaller piece of egg crate and put it in my tank as like a barrier. I try to use that way of defense more than the pipe now actually because I noticed that it doesn't stress the clownfish out as much as the pipe. Last little critter we're gonna talk about is actually my sea cucumber. My sea cucumber is doing really well. Uh, I was reading some of the comments about it in my last video and some of you were saying that they will climb walls of tanks if they're looking for food. And since my sand is relatively new in the grand scheme of things, I figured that made sense. So I went on a mission to see what else this thing likes to eat. At first I tried feeding frozen rotifers to the tank and I couldn't tell if the cucumber was eating them or not. The clowns went crazy for it, so I'll feed them that every now and again as a treat alongside their usual mysis diet. Uh, but the next time I saw the cucumber on the side of the tank, I went out on a limb and I dropped some fish flake in there just to see what would happen, and he gobbled it all up and went back down into the sand, so I think that's what he was looking for. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the darker side to owning a reef tank, and that's pests, which I found out are actually very easy to get no matter how hard you try to avoid them. It's just an inevitability that I've come to accept at this point. You may have noticed that my, the back of my tank has started getting a lot of hair algae growing on it now that my nutrient levels are rising. Part of me was like, maybe if I don't acknowledge its existence, it will go away. To no one's surprise, it didn't go away. <laughs> So I just had to get over it and scrape the back of the tank, which was actually pretty easy for the most part. I just had to be a little extra careful around the frog spawn because the clownfish were out for blood as per usual. Then afterwards, I did a water change and I washed my filter socks to get rid of a lot of the algae that had come off the walls. Afterwards, there were still some pieces that got stuck to the rock that didn't get sucked out, but those eventually got dislodged and sucked down into the sump or a snail probably ate them or something. Either way, my tank looks pretty clean for the most part. The other main pest that has made an appearance in my tank and is probably the most ruthless of them all, the absolute Sith Lord of Pests, Aptasia. I knew it was only a matter of time before they would make an appearance in my tank. One thing I didn't count on, however, it was how hard it was to keep the same polyps from coming back. Right now, I'm just spot treating the Aptasia, and it's kind of deceiving. So when I do dose these guys, the solution looks like it's melting them away because they ingest it and they shrivel up. But what I didn't know is that you have to essentially cover every single molecule of this polyp in this substance, or else it will just come back again. And that's what is happening to me right now. I just can't seem to get the entire thing to disappear. So now I have Aptasia coming back in the exact same spots as before, and then additional spots on top of that. Which, as you can imagine, is the most annoying thing on the planet. Especially when the Aptasia are tucked inside parts of the rock that I can't exactly reach. So what am I to do now? Well, we could put a copper band into my tank, which are notorious for eating 
Aptasia, but those fish are also super sensitive and I don't trust myself with one of those right now uh, with the limited experience that I do have. So next option would be to put in some peppermint shrimp since they are prone to eating Aptasia. So we are going to try that instead and see how that plays out. So besides the peppermint shrimp possibly coming in as an addition to this tank, what else is gonna be happening? So first thing is power heads, which I feel like I'm just leading you on with at this point because they never end up making their way into my tank no matter how much I talk about them. We are in fact working on it, believe it or not. The one that we want is just on back order and we don't exactly know when it will be back in stock. So that's just kind of up in the air at this point. And then uh, other critters that I want to make their way into the tank are an herbivorous fish of some sort and a few more corals, obviously. After the algae situation, I realized that I don't want to deal with that again. So um, getting a tang or a fox face into the tank would be super, super helpful. And since we just got some new fish in for set B in the building, uh, I may be able to take one of the old tangs that we had in there previously and put it into my tank. But we'll see. Plans can change. But uh, that is something that I do want to see in the future is just a fish to kind of eat away at whatever big clumps of algae make their way into my tank. As for corals, I am currently looking into putting in some pectinia on the opposite side from where the bird's nest is, and then possibly some more encrusting corals for the arches. I've been eyeing the freak hair pavona frags that we have in stock. Incredibly tempting. But we also have another giant selection of encrusting LPS and SPS, so the world is my oyster when I'm <laughs> working here. So uh, we'll see what I end up choosing for those archways. I really don't have anything specific picked out. Other than that, that's all I have to say about my tank thus far. I hope you guys are enjoying the journey and are as excited as I am for what's to come. Until next time, take care and as always, happy reefing.